This video does not produce the wanted product and is to show the importance of checking the paper you're working with. Because I didn't and the paper was horribly flawed. Let us dive straight into the fun. To begin, I weigh out one gram of pure food grade vanillin, followed by 0.6 grams of sodium hydroxide, which acts as our catalyst and forms the alkoxide from vanillin. For the last ingredient, we need a phenyl halide, which can be attacked by the vanillin alkoxide to form the desired ether. For this, I chose bromobenzene. It should be noted that although bromobenzene is not very toxic, that you are still handling a halogenated aromatic hydrocarbon, so working with protective equipment is a must. As you might know, sustaining a lab and building all of my pyrolysis equipment is expensive, and since I started studying, my resources are limited. For this reason, I created a Patreon account through which you can support the lab. So if you like my content, please consider supporting me so I can build more pyrolysis equipment and make better videos. But back to the video. Here you can see all of our reactants. On the left, the bromobenzene. In the middle, the sodium hydroxide dissolved in some acetone. And on the right, the vanillin. Here is where the flaw of the paper lies. The sodium hydroxide catalyzes aldol condensation and aldol addition reactions. With acetone, which is a ketone as our solvent, there are numerous side reactions. The sequence of the reactants doesn't matter. At first I am filling in the bromobenzene and rinsing the beaker once with acetone to maximize the transfer rate. This rinsing step is a normal lab procedure that minimizes the inevitable loss of reactants when they are transferred. This washing with solvent is especially important when you are working with small quantities or a high accuracy is needed. The second reactant to follow is the sodium hydroxide dissolved in acetone. To get this reaction to work properly, use acetone nitrile as solvent. It works with outside reactions. So now we are ready to stop the flask and start stirring. The reaction mixture is stirred for three hours to ensure that we have a good yield. This reaction type that we are performing is the so-called Williamson ether synthesis. It is a special type of nucleophilic substitution where an alkoxide acts as a nucleophile. In our case, the sodium hydroxide reacts with the OH group of the vanillin and yields the alkoxide ions in situ. The so formed alkoxide then attacks the carbon with the leaving group, which in our case is the carbon linked to the bromine atom in the bromobenzene. The bromine then leaves the carbon and the oxygen of the nucleophile bonds with the former halide carbon. But with the acetone present, this is only one of many reactions that take place, which leaves us with a highly contaminated product. Over the course of the reaction, two phases separate in the flask. The lower layer is potentially our product that can't fully dissolve in the solvent because acetone is not that non-polar. In the end, the reaction mixture has a nice creamy yellow color, similar to the lead oxide in the back. To work up the reaction mixture, we add some water to dissolve all polar hydrocarbons and the sodium hydroxide. This mixture is then extracted using 25 milliliters of xylene. This extraction is performed twice. Sadly, I forgot to film this part, but if you like to see how an organic substance gets extracted using a non-polar solvent, you can watch my video on Cinnamic Acid Synthesis Part 2. The organic extract is then transferred into my new rotational evaporator that was sponsored to me by Vaca Chemistry. A very big thank you goes to all of them. I will explain the roti and that's how we call the rotational evaporator where I live, in another video. But for a short explanation, the whole system operates under vacuum. And due to the spinning motion of the flask, the surface of the liquid is increased drastically. This leads to a very simple and easy to operate distillation of solvents. 
after the roti has done its job, a red crude vanillin fennel ether is left in the flask as brittle flakes. Due to the high percentage of side products, it was impossible to clean up the crude product. I am posting this video because I think it is very important to learn from failure. In this case, it is mine. But for the future, you and I know that fact-checking your papers is important. I hope you liked the video. If so, consider subscribing to my channel. I post chemistry content whenever I find the time to cut the videos. Because cutting the videos is the part that takes the most time. So, have fun and do not kill yourself.